Welcome to another episode of Ship of War, my review of The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Ship of War, when ship happens, I'm there. Now before I go into this review, I just want to give you guys a little history on my relationship with these films, the Lord of the Rings films. And here's my thing, I owned them all, and I saw each and every one of them opening weekend. Now here's my history, my little story on how I got into these films. Now I remember going to a movie, not exactly sure what movie it was, but seeing the trailer to The Fellowship of the Ring and I was with my friend and we were watching this trailer and after the trailer ended we just looked at each other and we're like, we must see this movie when it opens. We must. And we did. We did see the movie when it opened. We went to that theater and we were so excited. I think we went to one of the first showings for the evening for the movie and we just came out of that theater completely in awe with this film because it was nothing like we've ever seen before. I mean, we've seen Star Wars. I've seen the Star Wars films and theaters, at least the first episodes. And it just was different from that. It was just something so epic and amazing about these films. And the fact that the movie was like two hours and something minutes long, it was like one of the longest movies we've ever, we ever really seen in theaters. And back then, two hour and 40 whatever, two hour 30 minutes, just two hour films were just very uncommon at that point. So for us to go into a movie and seeing a movie being, being that long was just really different for us. And we just loved it. We're like, wow, this is great. We're sitting in the theater for God knows how long and we're enjoying the crap out of this, what we're watching on the screen. So I have to say the Lord of the Rings movies, Fellowship of the Ring back in 2001 was a really big deal for me when it came to my love for movies. So with that said, here's my thoughts on The Hobbit. I have to be completely honest and say I was slightly disappointed with this film because I made the mistake of, I guess, assuming The Hobbit was going to be as epic as the previous movies were. And to be, be, to be completely honest, it, it's not. It just did not give me the same feelings that I felt when watching the previous movies. And maybe it's because I'm older now, I've seen a lot of movies, I've been through a lot, and I guess I'm not that easily impressed as I was back then. I'm not exactly sure, but honestly, The Hobbit just wasn't up to par to the other previous movies. And with that said, I think the best thing you can do if you haven't seen the movie yet is go into The Hobbit as though you're seeing a movie that's completely standalone. Do not compare it to the previous films. Just go into the movie as though you're seeing a movie that you've never seen before about a story you've never heard before. Just go in with a completely open mind and an open heart. And I think you'll enjoy it a lot more as long as you don't compare it to the previous films. Now, I was disappointed with the film, but I still enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. I just was expecting a lot more from it. I want to go into the whole why I was disappointed with the film was that my main issue was the premise, the main premise of these films is I, I feel like it's not that epic. It's just kind of bland. It's basically the premise is that these dwarfs lost their mountain, their home, their city, their community, whatever you want to call it. And now they want it to get it back from a creature that I'm not going to say what it is. I don't want to spoil it. And so that's pretty much the story is these dwarfs wanting to get their mountain back. And to me, I just don't find that story to be anywhere near as epic as the previous movies when it came to the ring and all the wars there was starting and all that good stuff. So that's why I felt very underwhelmed. And I feel like after watching this movie, I'm like, this film would have been so great if this was released in 2001 and then the other films were then released later on. It is a slightly disappointing film in that sense but it's still a good film. It is still a good film. Visually, it's beautiful. The acting was wonderful. The score was beautiful. The battle scenes were just amazing. Like, that's the one thing that you have to give props to these films. The battle scenes in these movies are nothing like anything else. It was just, gives you chills just watching these 
battle scenes because they're almost like watching a dance people dancing like i don't know like watching a ballet but people killing each other so it's pretty damn epic in that sense so overall i did enjoy the movie just slightly disappointed or just disappointed and underwhelmed by the film not being as great as i wanted it to be that's my bad i guess you can say i just ended up i guess building myself up for disappointment now, as for the 3D, I got these cool 3D glasses when I saw the movie. So it's The Hobbit, they're green. Um, the 3D, I'm personally one of those people who loses the 3D really quickly. For me, I actually timed it. I lost the 3D around thir the 30 minute mark. 30 minutes into the movie, I was back to watching a 2D movie. In my brain, I was watching a 2D movie. I'm not watching a 3D movie anymore. Personally, 3D movies just don't do it for me. The only person that can do 3D movies in a way where I don't lose it and I remember, hey, I'm watching a 3D movie, is James Cameron. If James Cameron is not attached to the film and he's not the one doing 3D, I personally end up losing the 3D. I am sorry, but I really do. So I would suggest people, you don't have to go see this movie in 3D to enjoy it. Watch it in 2D. I watched the previous ones in 2Ds and I ended up enjoying the crap out of them. So there's no point for 3D in my opinion. As for the romance in the movie, there wasn't any romance, which is unfortunate because in the other movies there were. Maybe there's going to be something that's going to happen in the second or third film that I'm not aware of. I never read the book, so I don't know in the book if there's a romance or not. But there wasn't really anything that I can really think of that jumped out at me. No, I can't think of anything. So there was no romance. So that was a slightly another disappointing thing for me as a female who enjoys that sappy stuff. So who would I recommend this movie to? I'll basically recommend this movie to everyone. Just go see it and see it for yourself. See whether or not you're gonna like it. Maybe you're gonna love it. Maybe this is going to be the movie that's gonna open your eyes to the previous ones. Maybe you haven't seen the previous ones and you're going to go see this one and then you're gonna be like, wow, I really enjoyed this one. Let me go watch the other one. If that's the case, go see this movie. I recommend everybody go see this movie. Even though I personally was slightly disappointed with it, I still feel like everybody should go see this film. That is all for this episode of Ship War. Goodbye and until next time. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Ten times. Wow. Okay, anyways. So Anna Karenina is a movie that I was actually really looking forward to. It's directed by Joe Wright. And he's directed some films that I extremely love to the point that I own them. Um, Lawrence and Pride and Prejudice. Love these movies. And then he also did Hannah, which I also really enjoy, but do not own. So, I was really looking forward to this movie because of that fact. And 